Do you put a lot of uh, thought into what you wear to work? Not an incredible amount of thought. Now, this morning, um, I would say I put nil thought in. I took exactly what was lying on the banisters, yeah. which is a shirt which doesn't actually belong to me. It belongs to a friend of mine. A leather jacket, which is always there on standby. And uh, the jeans, which are the ever-popular covering of a man's legs at this hour of the morning. What about the boots? The boots, the boots belong to the Gay Burn Show. They do. Given to me this time last year for the survival course. And for that, I am eternally grateful. <laughs> Let's go to work. So you dress really casually for work then? Casually, that would certainly be one way of putting it. The way I dress at this hour of the day is a barometer now for the rest of the staff. If I come in and uh, my clothes are even vaguely coordinated, and by that I mean having a jumper that's uh, mildly coordinated with my jacket and trousers. Well, it means that at least my mental condition is somewhat capable of doing the day's work. And when we get round here now, they will take one quick glance and then they will decide what state I'm in this morning. Thank you very much. Good morning, all. You're all look so happy and well. Delighted to see me. I suppose I'm superstitious about my hair. I don't know whether it's because I think it's fashionable or cute looking or whether I'm afraid that if it's cut, my virility will be taken away in some way or another. I'm not, I'm not quite sure why I still have the ponytail. I started putting it back in a ponytail and I just decided I'd leave it like that after a while. Um, <laughs> Tiffany on the Navin Road. How would you end up being called Tiffany and living on the Navin Road? Now, she's talking about the buses, right? Okay. So. Do the old sort of looking out from the top story, the buses, you know, these people, single people in large automobiles. Mm. Polystyrene adds so much to the taste of coffee, doesn't it? On line three, it's Tiffany. Good morning, Tiffany. Good morning, Jerry. Good morning, Tiffany. You sound a bit wrecked this morning. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty knackered, all right. You're pretty knackered, eh? You're not another hangover merchant, are you? Oh, no, no. Well, Very what healthy. has you knackered then? Oh, you know, college and going into town every day. And college and work. going into town every day. <laughs> it's just like doing relief work in the Sudan, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. Tiffany, how did you manage to get called Tiffany and you're living in the Navin Road? <sighs> don't ask. Just don't ask. I don't really know. My parents just like it. Actually, I have quite a healthy interest in clothes. In fact, I have a fascination with clothes and have had ever since I started dressing myself. Once again, though, now, not having free time these days, not having the time to ramble. When I, when I had free time during the day, I, I did something that I think a lot of men don't do in this country. I, I'd go for a, a ramble around town two or three times a week, do a lot of window shopping, and then eventually I'd make my decision. I think Irish men, in actual fact, you know, they, they usually decide, I want yellow socks, I'll go to X shop, buy them. In actual fact, I'd give myself a lot more time before I'd make my final decision. You mean these guys with their Ray-Bans and their BMW yeah, 5 Series and nothing else except themselves and their cashmere coat in the exactly, passenger seat? Yeah. And Do you not like, like those people? No, there's one person in a big, huge car and they're all causing these big traffic jams and then they're the ones who complain about the traffic jams. What are you studying? <laughs> Marketing in Japanese. Marketing in Japanese? Yeah. So in other words, you've got a business career ahead of you. <laughs> I don't know, I suppose so, yeah. Yeah, well, you're going to end up in a 5 Series BMW with a cashmere <laughs> coat and a business suit as well, aren't you? I don't know about that, man. Right. How would you like to give them the air cell and Katrina, as the BA, will be with them. So the plan is they start at Parnell Square, they make their way down O'Connell Street, up Grafton Street, and we take eight phone calls from them every 20 minutes during the programme. And what do we tell the listeners that he's not actually a physically handicapped person? We do, okay. because he is uh, he, he's experiencing the problems that people bound to a wheelchair would have. Oh, did you see yeah. this? This came in this morning. Maybe with that, have a look at it. Okay. Thanks very much. Okay, see you again. T-shirt. Now, I can recognise, actually, some of the items here. We've got the, we've got the dog and the wheelchair. Now, I don't know what the dog is meant to be. That could be gay burn, I don't know. But the wheelchair, I think, is obviously referring back to an item about people who couldn't get into discos and wheelchairs. We had a lot of heated discussion about that. Then we have, I see, a mallet made in Kildare. That's obviously about the, uh, the slaughtering of uh, animals in abattoirs in Kildare, which also generated a ferocious amount of interest. Then we've this woman here with her melting mirror and her Bible can only be Mother Ireland. And she's tied up, I presume, by the men of Ireland, still to this day. Then we have the giant snails over here. We interviewed a gentleman who had found a giant snail, and think about that size, careering across his mother's bed in Port Leash, I think it was. So that's obviously where they come from. Then we have a radio up there, which is not totally inappropriate. 
Meow, what is it? Let's see. Well, Meow is a cat, isn't it? Is there a cat there? Let's see. No, no. That would probably be Colin Hayes' cat, which was run over by a truck and rebuilt live on the air on the Jerry Ranch. <laughs> Well, there we go, another faultless day's exercise under the belt. Don't strain yourself, then. Do you get much time to do these workouts? No, I used to be, I used to be reasonably um, attached to one particular gym where I, where I live when I was on the nighttime programs because I had a lot of free time during the day and I'd go there three or four times a week, but now I have to admit uh, it's, mm. it's a thing of the past. Now, you usually run would wear shoes uh, mm. when doing workouts. Yes, well, as you can see, I do not possess what one could describe as a standard gym outfit. I do not possess gym shoes. In fact, I have very few shoes. Um, I have a, a resolution which I've just undertaken to buy a new pair of shoes every week for the next six months. That has not yet happened. Um, the gym shoes will probably never materialise, but who needs gym shoes with feet like that? I have a free Radio 2 t-shirt or sweatshirt, which I am using on this occasion because I don't have anything else, and uh, these belong to my brother. So one could not say that I was particularly well equipped in the gym department, no, or the shoe department for that matter. But one thing that you have bought recently are the radio clothes. I got stuck into the recent radio collection. It was the first time that I've gone shopping literally in months, in about five or six months. And I bought myself some jeans and stuff like that. But the favourite thing, my favourite thing out of all that lot was this long rider's coat, a very, very long coat, the sort of thing you saw Clint Eastwood stashing in all of his lugers, etc., under a jury in a fistful of dollars. And, uh, this is one of my favourites at the moment. It's very swishing, very flowing, and it's got lots of image. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a great thing to spot on the horizon. I think it is. I'm not quite sure, but that's the intention. I'm a peer walker. I, do, I like walking. I like going for walks to, to escape from the mausoleum. 